Hey, and welcome back to another video. In this video, we're looking at how to export an image from Twinmotion. We want to create a rendering. If at any point in this video, you happen to learn something or you just like the video, if you wouldn't please demolish that like button, it really helps me out a lot. Also change the phase of that subscribe button to existing. If you have not done that already, that also helps me out very much. I'm in a basic scene here. I've got like a back backyard scene going through some options and I want to create a rendering. I've got all the content in the scene and it's now time to create a rendering. I, I probably want to create a rendering from this location over here. So let's go move over here. I'm going to go up to the eye and I'm going to change to walk mode. So I fall to the ground and let's just go ahead and frame a shot here. Just get pretty close here. So this is great. And so now I can come down to media and I can simply hit create image and I will immediately have an image that's created. And this image is based on my current location where my camera was. And you can see that it's right there. Now, what I can do is if I decide, you know, I kind of want to move over here, I can simply, and you'll also notice that this image didn't update, but if we move over here, we can see recapture. And this is going to take the new location of where I am and update that image right there. That's simple enough. Now, maybe I do want to actually be back here and see more of the backyard. And I'll go ahead and update that again. And so we could, the nice thing about this is that it's going to keep all the settings that we ultimately make and it's just moving and you know, changing the location of the camera. That's really nice. So coming over here, I can see I've got these three dots and I've got its keyframe menu. So I can select those dots. I can duplicate this image. If I want to duplicate it, I can, of course, delete it. I can rename it. That's great. I'm, I'm okay with all of that right now, but hovering down over the image again, I can see at the bottom right, I see more. And as soon as I hit more, we get all these options into what we want to do for this rendering, all the settings. I typically want to start with format because this is just really the output size of the image. And honestly, this is not a huge deal, at least for what we're doing here. So this full HD 2K image will be just fine. I can always come in here and set a custom output size if I want for some reason to make it for a widescreen or anything like that. Any specific size will work. So I'll get back into the settings here and we, let's start with location. This location, it's pretty nice. Now, if you've watched other videos of mine, you can set a location for your project where you can set the north and you know the location will be everything that you need as far as the sun and everything. All, you want to set that up first for the project, but this, if you're in media mode, and you'll see your, if you're in media mode over here at the right, it says quit media mode. That tells me I'm in media mode. Everything is going to also be pink or magenta, and that will tell you you're in media mode. If you're in media mode, this localization setting, the location, is going to be completely unique to this image only. So that's very nice in that you can simply select a new location. Maybe you want the site to be somewhere else, or maybe you decide, well, I, I want the north to look, you know, not quite be where I had set it previously. That's okay. I kind of like where it is right now, but I do want to change the time of day. And so remember, all of this is based on just this particular rendering, just this shot. So that's something to be aware of as well. So if we want to change the month, we can get all these different sun angles based on the location. All right, that looks good. Let's go ahead and set this to a different month. All right, make sure my north offset is zero because I don't need to change it. Of course, you got your background you can change, all these different backgrounds. You can rotate the background if you want to see something else in the shot. That makes, that makes a little more sense. I want more of a countryside background. Now, I, obviously, I don't have a lot going on here as far as whatever this material is, but that's okay. We're just in schematic phases here go back to my settings. And so I've looked at my location. Now I want to look at weather. If I've gone through all these settings and multiple videos, so go check those out for sure. But now we can actually apply this to our image and, you know, I can make this look however I want. I probably want to add some clouds, make it look a little more realistic. The season, you know, probably don't want this to be winter time. It's, it's just fine. If it's spring, we can put some growth here effects. Wind speed, direct, you know, that's all fine. Don't really care about that. I probably want to remove the smog, particles on, off. I, I don't have an ocean. This is, it doesn't quite apply here. I can go back to my image and lighting. This is really important. You can adjust the overall exposure here. 
I, I feel like the exposure is just fine, so I'll leave it there. I want to leave my global illumination on. Of course, I've got more options here with that as well. Shadows are fine. More, I got sun reflecting. You know, this is all pretty good. I'm, I'm mostly fine with this. The camera, this is where things get kind of interesting. Now, a lot of times what I would tell you to do, especially if this is for an architectural rendering and you want to make sure it looks as correct as possible, that this parallelism is on. And you'll notice just a slight difference in what's going on. And the idea is that I'm going from a perspective view where I've got perspectives and instead going to a parallel view. This parallel view will make sure that every line, model, every whatever element it is, if it's vertical in the model, it will show up as vertical in the rendering. If I turn this off again, you could see there's some slight angles in some of these vertical elements here. Whereas if I turn parallelism on, I get this nice vertical element actually appearing vertical. We want that. Vignetting, this is kind of up to you. I'm not sure why it's set to 40% by default because I probably want it to be a bit less, maybe 10%. Lens flares are nice, visual effects. There's all kinds of stuff here. You can like get into like an Instagram type of post here if you want. I don't personally need to do that. Maybe we want to put the saturation up a bit more so things look a, a bit <laughs> more colorful. Back to visual effects, you know, you can make it look just about anything. We can add all these different types of filters if we want, make it look 8-bit, whatever it might be. A blueprint, of course, this looks absurd, but nonetheless, all these are here. Going back to camera. Phase, that's something I'm going to cover in a future video. Phases are probably one of the most complicated things that are in twin motion, just allowing you to have certain elements on certain phases. Don't need to worry about that, generally speaking, if you're just trying to export a rendering. That's going to do it for all the settings. And, you know, this this is looking pretty good. I'm pretty happy with this. Now, this is nice. And if you go back to the image, you can see this image looks exactly like it does here. You know, maybe I want to... I'll go ahead and play with the sun a bit more. We can get a different time of day, maybe. So this looks pretty good here. We've adjusted our settings. We've got a morning shot. And so I'm going to go back to my image and we can see that it, it does match in the image what we're seeing here in the media mode. And so as soon as I hit quit media mode, everything goes back to normal. I, I, I've back to my scene. It's got the daylight settings that are normal and those daylight settings are found up here. I can change all that here and it's completely independent from the image, which is kind of nice. Now maybe what I want to do is update this material to be probably the same grass material. So that looks good. Then let's go back to our image. And we can go back to the image just by clicking on the image. It's gonna take us back. We're gonna have all the settings like we want in the image, but now that material is updated and it looks pretty good. So simply, once I get to this point, I go down to the bottom and I hit export. And I've got all these options of exporting anything. And you can export multiple things, honestly, but. We're just working with an image so I can go to image and I can select my image and I could select multiple images if I wanted to. And at that point, I just select that one image and I can start export. I'll go ahead and place this on the desktop, hit OK, and that's it. It's going to take just a couple seconds because twin motion is pretty quick. Another reason why I love the export in out of twin motion. It's very quick and then really the same as videos. Videos are pretty quick as well. So that will do it for exporting images. It's pretty simple. Just being aware that the settings that you have within the image itself are different than the project and that you have full control over both is very important to be aware of. If I left anything out or if you have any more questions, please leave those in the comment section below. Be sure to get to all of those. If you happen to learn something, please demolish that like button. It helps me out so much. Also, if you haven't already, change the phase of that subscribe button to existing. That also helps me out so much. I can't thank you more for watching. Have a wonderful day. See you in the next one.